welcome back to the channel. Just another day of moving stuff around, I think. So, a bit of a vloggy style. I've just pulled up to the offices. Just 20 to 10. Which means I'm late by about 10 minutes. And those 10 minutes are important. I've got a few parcels that I need to get out. I've got one specific shelf that I want to take down and I wanted to fill up a bag for some car boot stuff for the weekend. So I've got it there if I potentially have the time to go and do a car boot sale. Then I've got it at home, haven't I? Because it's Friday today. I want this. The weather's looking sweet for Saturday and Sunday. Like, really good. But I also want to go buying as well. I want to get a buying video out. I want to go and buy some stuff. I want to go and hunt again. All right, I want to sharpen my spear and get out on that field and take down some gazelles. You get the analogy. Oh my goodness. I always forget just how bad it is in here. But that's the shelf that I want today. Or that one. They're both the same size. I am, however, going to focus on... I don't know. What was I going to say? YouTube sent me an email yesterday saying I was one of a few specially selected, which means I probably send it to a million people, to receive free Greggs, so a sausage roll, discount to merch, or something like that, and something else, prize draw. But you can't fucking log on. I reckon everybody got the email at the exact same time, and everyone just piled onto the app, because I can't register through their link. It just doesn't load the page. What is that angle? When I tell you, I figured out the perfect recording spot in the garage already as well. Right, I've picked a lot of this stuff already yesterday, so that's going to be nice and easy. I say picked, I picked it and put it over here, but where has it gone? Shit. There it is. My eBay has taken a massive, massive, massive hit doing all this. You know, I'm fortunate that I don't just have eBay as my main source of income. I have YouTube, I have outside deals of eBay, I have different avenues where I can get some cash, get some revenue flow. But it just goes to show, when you're not concentrating on it like that, like refreshing and listing, in fact, what I have been doing is refreshing, sorry, but when you're not listing new stuff, oh boy, it's important to make sure you keep doing that. Right, no particular order for £7.20 all in. A repeat customer. I forget to look at the name each time. So if you're a viewer, then I massively appreciate you. If not, then you're not going to see this anyway, but I still massively appreciate you. It's a vintage Cadbury's tin. Rusty, crusty, but still very cool looking. The camera just took a tumble, mate. Next we have a Morphe Richards vacuum cleaner. It's just a body only, nothing else. It works. Sold for £17.99. pence. This was listed for hire and reduced and reduced and reduced. Until somebody finally went, oh, I've got the rest of that, I'll buy that. I've been very mugged off recently. And I'm debating whether to open up and talk about it or not. I'm undecided yet. Not today. I'm not. I don't think there's going to be anything coming today. I need a lot of careful consideration. But I feel like I've been uh, taking the piss out of, and you know I don't stand for that. So I've got to work out what's best. If I come to a decision that it's best, and then I'm going to go ham. You know, if I don't come to that decision, then obviously I won't. But yeah, I feel slighted. And you know, I can't let that go sometimes. Like name calling, bitching, trolling, all that kind of stuff on the internet, I can deal with it. I can give a fuck. It's digital. It means nothing to me. Unfortunately, for the people who try. But in real life, I mean like in proper real life. Sometimes it, internet life can cross over to real life as well. But very rare for me for that to happen. But it does happen. But when you, I get slighted in real life, it affects my sleep and I don't get much of that. 
Unfortunately, I'm a man who needs revenge and or closure on things. Our people would say that having to have revenge or something like that makes me the weak person. I refuse to believe it. I don't believe it. But anyway, I'm speaking a lot about something I haven't even spoken about. Did I even tell you what that was I just sold? Yeah, I did, yeah. It's a fucking oven in here again, so that's good. And I'm filming, so I can't even strip off. It was hard in the edit the other day. When I was editing that um, video back, and obviously I had to keep zooming in on my top off. Too hard, man. Too hard to do that. But like I said, I don't care that you've seen a nipple. <laughs> Like what you see of me doesn't bother me. Just more thinking of you guys having your lunch and breakfast. Right, Tonka Toy sold for £18.99. pence. Got this from Rick at the Car Boot Sale. For £2.50, I think. I think he was just making a charitable donation. The prick. I'm actually going to use one of these boxes that I managed to condense down yesterday to pack it in. Because these boxes are shit. Oh, well, they're good, but they're not for storage. I mean, not for like working out of. Does that make sense? They're cardboard, bro. That's no good. That's my weapon of choice. There we go. That has to be the worst bit of packaging I've ever done in my whole entire life. That was terrible. My cuts were wrong, my sections were wrong, my folds were wrong. Just dreadful. The package is protected, obviously, but just cut it wrong, sliced it wrong, did it all wrong. Box Q, box I. I forgot what was what. Box Q is that, fuck me. Box Q is that walkie talkie. Oh, indeed. If you're still watching my videos, and obviously I've been really shit at getting back to you certain things, but still available. Condition's good. A few scratches and little bits and pieces. There's the tag and stuff on it. Few little marks but no cracks see through there like 13 pound posted if you want it holler me brother i know you don't have instagram and that's the problem i'm actually act more active on tiktok now so you can come over there if you like sorry dude if you are watching when i first contacted you or we was talking i wasn't really using tiktok then but you were but don't forget you can always contact me via my email my email address is always linked down below along with my instagram which is probably the easiest but i appreciate not everyone has instagram so TikTok, Instagram, and email, all linked down below. Take a key, fuck these people up. <sighs> Hip hop's just getting good again at the minute. I say good, like it's stirred up, it'll die down, and then be back to trash again. I mean, the real hip hop scene, do you know what I mean? Not even that, this is a real hip hop. Mm, yeah, actually, Kendrick, it is. Drake, yeah. Oh shit, by the way, that was a walkie talkie for. Ten pounds fifteen. Sorry, I forgot. More folks on doing this packaging, so I can. Can't wait to leave this place. Can't open the windows. They've got those like no no <laughs> windows. Done it again. Eon Energy Meter, ten pounds eighty. It's the meter and charger base only, no connections, no prongs, no nothing. People need to learn how to lay their addresses out, man. Well, surely you know how to lay your address out. Surely. Maybe not, I'm sweating again. I wouldn't care if I wasn't filming. I mean that in all the nicest way possible, because I would just be stripped. I'd take my socks off, my top off, just have my shorts on. No hat, because the hat keeps you hot. I'm just gonna do one more, one more, because the lady was so nice to me. So these lovely treen wooden earrings, like leaf design, really nice for I think eight pound, sent me an offer. Yeah, eight pound, she can have those today. 
She was lovely to me. See how a little bit of politeness and polite interaction gets you gets you more than you want sometimes. Isn't that funny, eh? I put up a massive stack of gold clubs yesterday, like 45, 46 on Marketplace. I said 50 quid the lot, no offers. There's clubs, there's drivers, there's all sorts, yeah? I put in the listing, so it works out about a pound each is what I put in the listing. Brother, brother and sister, when I tell you I had people wanting to come around and pick up one or two for a pound each and leave the rest, that's a, a, it got to the point where I had to explain. The reason why I've done it like this is because I know there's a lot of junk in there. I've left some good ones in there on purpose. So you lot come and buy them all, sell off whatever you want to sell off and get whatever you want for free. Does that make sense? If I was happy to do them for a pound each, I would take them to the car boot sale and sell them for three pound each. So that's what I'd get there. But with the amount that's there, just try that first, isn't it? Send them off quicker like that to get, get someone to come to me instead of taking up valuable uh, car space. Well, I think I'm done packing today. I might save the rest until tomorrow or Monday. It hasn't going to be done until Monday. So I'm going to leave those there for a minute. And I'm going to work on getting one of these shelves down. That one or that one. I'm going to pick one. Because I've basically worked out I can fit a small shelf in between my workspace and my big shelf. But I've probably got to hammer it in to knock it in because it's literally... I've got to wedge it, basically. I think it's 75 wide and the space I've got is 74 and a half. And I've been knocking it and knocking it and it's bendy. I can, I can bodge it in there, I'm hoping. But we'll see. So I'm going to get one of these shelves down and get naked. And you've got to pay to see that. We've got the shelf empty. I'm hoping it goes in the car in one piece, but I doubt it. So I'm just going to... I've got to go and get the car. When I got here, the selfish twats. People who do like house removals and things like that, they just block every single car park space there is or they deal with their own business because apparently, you know, this is just for them. Can anybody else feel the lift moving when they're standing outside of it? Or is it just me? Or have I got some kind of superpower that I've tapped into? I can feel the lift, the whole world is moving. Now the lift's coming up. So weird. I'll go and get the car from over there, just send it back down there because look at the people! What do you reckon? Oh, so close. I know I'm a whingy old man, but I wish I had a thermometer in here to show you guys. Right, I suppose I better try and get this out of I? I'm gonna try and take it in one go, and then get to the car, be massively embarrassed, and realize I've got to take it all down. I'm gonna try first. Because apparently, God loves a trier. So that's how I'm gonna try and get it in the car. Because that'll just save my life. Getting home, it just saves one job. I doubt it though. But I have faith in my Victra. Come on, baby. Because once that's up, that's when I can start bringing back home stuff that's unlisted, which is obviously a lot of this, and start stacking it up ready to be listed and sorting through it, what's junk, what's not, what's car boot, what's not. And I'm just sitting here thinking about it. If I'm taking that shelf today, probably can't sell it at a car boot sale with fresh stock. So I might just go buying tomorrow. Yeah, I'm gonna buy tomorrow. That's what I'm gonna do. I'll buy tomorrow and aim to sell on Sunday. Yeah. Somebody's coming to buy them golf clubs tomorrow, apparently. We'll see. So that was a rant for nothing. Not a rant for nothing, but, you know. Right, let me go and get this home. Uh, no. Shit. See what I mean? It starts moving before it's even fucking closed. This is gonna... I can't wait to get out of here. This thing's gonna kill me. I'm going to die in here if I don't get out of here sooner. I can't go out like this. I can't go like that. Not like that. I'm not squashed in a tin can. Oh, you want to take it? Yep, I will. Thanks. <laughs> no problem. Great. 
All right, let's do this. It's like a greenhouse in here as well. I'm just not designed for hot weather and I'm also not designed for cold weather. I don't know what to do with myself. Okay, let me show you what I'm trying to do. See this gap just there, I can't go no further than that because of the gas mains. I had this over there to begin with and I thought, I wonder if. So I've moved it across as far as it will go, meaning I'm gonna be able to capitalize on space and put one just there and just have a small gap there instead of having a big gap. And this gap here is like 74 and a half centimeters. That shelf is 75. This is a metal rickety shelving unit. I'm hoping to bend and wedge another half a centimetre. We can only but try, can't we? This coming out in one go has been amazing. Do you see what I mean? I'm hoping I can sort of like bend it and wedge it in and get it in. Holy shit, I think I've done it. I think I've done it. Because that's going to be goods in, goods in, packing materials and bits and pieces that I need to hand, printer and whatever else. Packing and listing, I'm going to double that. I'm going to have another one just there. I can't believe it worked. I, I literally have no choice. It's literally millimetres, millimetres. Because of that gas mains, I can't do anything else. It's millimetres. I'm buzzing, I'm absolutely buzzing. So these are the normal size shelves, yeah? Jess sent me a link on Amazon, two shelves for like 35 quid, I think, or something. I was like, yes, boss, ordered them. That's what arrived, fucking Jack Hoodie shelf. Cheers anyway, Jess. I can't even begin to tell you how emotionally involved I am with this setup. Not because it looks pretty, just because of, just, I'm working with like, it's an, it's an act of God, it's an act of God. With that and that, it's an act of God. Oh, I'm so happy. So I'm gonna have the printer here all here and the wires all up here and then the macbook and that can go there or maybe maybe the macbook can even go up here to be fair in fact the macbook and printer will probably go up there so i'll just work from there life's a fucking dream now i'm very aware that i'm getting overexcited about a shelf what you need to realize is if i don't find motivation in these little things i won't find any motivation at all i have to take things in little steps and little chunks and take these little wins and these little things like the shelf fitting perfectly in to pull me on to the next thing, to pull me on to the next thing, to pull me on to the next thing. Because this is a lot. You know, this move is massive, again. Because I moved out of here because I couldn't absorb the stock because the place was too small. I've then gone to a bigger place, carried on taking stock. Doesn't matter how shit it is, I've carried on taking it, so I've still got it. Now I've got to bring it all back. As well as, well as move and get this place perfect and sell off all the stuff before my final date. Does that make sense? And as a single car, you know, as a man who goes to the car booting cell on his own to sell, unless I can organise Pat being there or something, or a day when Rick comes up, car booting on your own is hard. Not because of the work, but literally the only thing that stops me is, what if I need a Wii? You know, you're stuck. You can't do anything. And that seriously is the only thing that holds me back from doing car boot sales on my own. <laughs> because remember, once I sold out of car boot sales on my own, I really needed a Wii. In the end, I just went, fuck it. I just trusted the person next to me. I said, would you mind? Just a minute. Don't sell anything. Tell them I'll be back. And I hated doing that. And it's going to come to a few. But yeah, regardless, I'm going to... And, and my local one that I can meet Patrick at, which is fantastic. I love Pat for meeting me. He really does me a favour there. And I enjoy spending the day with him and Paul. But the clientele, the customers are just not as good. You know what I mean? It's much easier because it means I get to do a car boot with somebody. I have backup. But the clientele is a lot more... They're just like wanderers and browsers. There is resellers there. But the resellers that are there that know me tend to get put off with my stuff because they think, well, you're a reseller. Why are you not selling it? What they don't realise is Sam will attest to this and a few other people who have bought from me, it's just stuff that I have not, will not get around to. Like the stuff this time, I'm gonna bring, eventually I'm going to bring loads of consoles completely untested and unchecked. But the majority of them are most likely going to work. But their people will skip them because they'll be like, meh, not too sure, don't trust you. And that's on them. So if I do bring them down to a car boot sale they don't sell, I'll just put that, I'll just put a massive lot on Facebook. It'll go in 10 minutes. Big gaming bundle, like that'll be gone in 10 minutes, regardless of condition, as long as I price it right. So yeah, these small little wins, these small little things that I get enthusiastic about, they seem petty, they definitely are obviously going to be personal, but that's why. Each little thing drags me along to the next thing, and the next thing, and the next thing. Because if I just look at it as one big thing, got to move all this, got to do that, got to... 
overwhelming. I'll just put, I'll just won't do it. I'll just do something. I'll, I'll, I'll wait until it gets disastrous and panic mode and do it all in the last day. But yeah, I hope you're enjoying being brought along this long journey of micro moving. I know it can be quite boring, but somebody mentioned that they're enjoying watching the progress throughout and seeing it happen. It does feel like moving back home with your mum. Does that make sense? Like I've moved out and I've come back. But it's for the better. I don't need a massive space when I'm not doing consignment. I was surviving just well before. I'm not trading money over comfort and freedom. As long as I'm making enough to get by, I don't really care about making the extra. I don't, and that, and that is my problem. Ricky will attest to that. Ricky is very, my friend Ricky, very, very money motivated, very money oriented. And I'm, I am money motivated, but I won't go the extra mile if it's going to jeopardise something else that I'm very comfortable with. For example, my headspace. Consignment was great but i felt like i had a boss so the fact that it was coming to an end and then it ended earlier anyway was a good thing for me I was, I'm, ha I'm happy with that but obviously now i've got to move back so i will never jeopardize happiness or comfort for money i'll go through discomfort in order to obtain my in order to obtain money if it's part of a process which i deem viable and worthy but anything outside of that you know, I get comments all the time like they say certain things about certain things I've done and say, well, you could have done it yourself for this or you could have done it yourself for that. And I'm like, bro, you, you don't understand. You have no idea. That's you. You do that. You be you. Good for you. But I'm not, I'm not about that. As long as my bills are paid and we're not struggling for food and stuff, anything else is a massive bonus. Because I know that whatever it is, I'm destined for something big. I don't know what it is. I don't, I'm not talking fame. I'm not talking... Anything like that, but I'm destined for something big. I've just got to unlock what it is inside me, figure it out properly, which I'm going through at the moment. I'm on a massive journey. I've been for the last few years now. I am destined for something huge to happen. And that's not a dream. That's not a daydream. That's not, oh, you're fucking, oh, you're going to win the lottery, mate. No, 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 I'm not going to win the lottery. I'm going to have to put a lot of work in. But I'm destined for something. So while I'm paying my bills, and my car's just about still running, I'm happy. Anyway, thanks for being here. I'm going to go sort this out. I'll see you on the next one. Take care.